Hello and welcome to Hank Gives Hank. My name is John Green, manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombles. Today, taking on today, today taking on Port Vale Football Club. Clearly, a made-up place, Port Vale. Um, I, 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 that's just a, a prototypically fictional English place. Um, today's topic, uh, one of the last Project for Awesome topics. Uh, people donated to the Project for Awesome to get a topic. This one comes from Teresa. Really interesting topic. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to read it to you. I'm a high school librarian with an undergrad degree in English and religious studies. As such, I've come to see the value of religions as primarily being in their stories and how they affect the lives of those who believe in them. But I'm interested in what you think about perceiving the value of all major world religions versus actually believing slash having faith in one single belief system, being able to see the history behind all the developments, etc. How do you then choose to see one as being true over the other? So I, I studied uh, religion in college. I studied mostly uh, Islam and uh, early Islamic history, you know, um, the, sort of the first four uh, caliphs after the, the death of the prophet. Um, and I, I, I really studied very little uh, in the way of like Christian history or Christian theology. But I myself am a Christian. I'm Episcopalian, which is a, a denomination of Christianity that's sort of like a bit of a middle ground between Catholicism and uh, old school mainline Protestantism. And uh, why am I a Christian and not a Muslim is an interesting question. And one that I certainly thought a lot about, especially when I was younger, um, because I was so deeply engaged in, um, you know, Islamic history and in talking to uh, Muslims about their, um, you know, their religious experiences, their religious beliefs. And, and um, but, you know, but I was always looking at that uh, religious tradition from outside of it. You know, I was always looking at it from outside of um, what I think. Oh, that was just, just wrongly worded, that pass. It was just a little bit off, by the way. Um, we have acquired only one new player at the transfer deadline. You see him right there. His name is Dix. I'm not being naughty or anything. That is his name. He is, he was the best right back available. I was not being, you know, oh, what a great ball from Dix. But John Green just isn't able to finish it. Um, happens a lot. Happens to all of us. But we did get a corner kick out of it. So why did I end up uh, settling with the religious tradition of my childhood? Um, I mean, I grew up sort of, you know, not particularly religious, but uh, insofar as we were religious, we were, you know, sort of like generically Protestant. We went to Methodist churches or Episcopalian churches, mostly or Presbyterian. Um, why did I end up with that being um, my faith instead of Islam? It's not because I think Christianity is a better religion than Islam. I don't think that uh, I don't think that religions really work that way. I don't think that there are like good ones and bad ones. I think that they are all complicated and diverse and uh, and contain multitudes. Um, you know, talking about a religion is like talking about any other civilizational uh, structure. You know, for me at least, like it's hard to it's hard to make um, many generic comments about massively diverse religious traditions, whether it's Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism or, or any of the major world faiths, because we're talking about, you know, hundreds of millions or billions of people who, um, you know, are, are living their religious faith within lots of different other um, cultural identifiers, you know, or, or civilizational identifiers. It's not, um, you know, it's not all Religion isn't the only religion isn't the only force shaping um, shaping people's lives, even very religious people's lives. The short answer is that in the end, I decided that um, that there was some benefit to having as my own religious tradition, the one that I was going to kind of work inside, one that I'd known since childhood, and that I that, that a lot of the sort of cultural um, identifiers um, that were that were going to be part of my life were. Um, were you know that I'd grown up with I'd grown up with thinking thinking of them through the lens of Christianity or thinking of them through the lens of the Christian sacraments baptism and um, you know uh, the process of confirmation stuff like that I'm gonna go attacking now and there's Yoda Yoda on the ball Yoda Yoda he's fast he's smart but he just got muscled off by the Port Vale player so something I've noticed in FIFA 16 um, is that if you run up the sides it seems Pass to John Green. Very nice. 
And then you go ahead, you pass to that guy. Very good. If you run up the sides and you can just get a little, sometimes you can score right there. Yes! Yes, it actually worked! Holy snood! Oh, do a little dance for me. I don't even know who that is. Oh, I think it's Wild Shot. It's Wild Shot, Meredith. He took a wild shot and look at the results. I've noticed this, though, that if you can just get, like, to that line, it doesn't actually matter where you are. If you just shoot, you usually score. So I've been trying to just work my way up the sides and then instead of crossing it in, just run it in and then shoot from an impossible angle and then FIFA rewards me with a goal. This is how I've been much better in League One than we were in League Two, at least so far. Plus, we have better players. We've got guys like Wild Shot um, and Dix. I'm really looking forward to Dix scoring a goal. I've got a song for him and everything. Um, so, uh, oh my God, look at Akin Fenway. He's big, Meredith, but he's also surprisingly nimble. He's going to try to do that thing. He's just been fouled. He's fouled again. Wow. Double fouls inside the box. No penalty called because the referee is biased against Big Ben. So, um, yeah, basically I decided that, like, um, you know, that there was that there was some value to, to me, not for everyone, but for me in, um, in kind of living within and working within the religious tradition that I grew up with. That said, like, I have a lot of, I have a lot of, like, I guess, religious beliefs that probably wouldn't be considered that hit the post, that wasn't very good defending, wouldn't be considered orthodox, um, uh, Episcopalian beliefs, um, including that I, you know, I certainly don't think that, um, uh, that should there, that, that I, like, including that I'm not particularly interested in the question of the afterlife, not even really that interested in the question of, like, the, uh, the you know, this sort of, like, narrow question uh, question that you see debated a lot on theistic forums like does God exist just not that in interested in um, in in that I would say that was a red card offense because you you hurt wild shut but it's okay you got a yellow card for it you still you've still been acknowledged as naughty oh that's a great ball what a ball from John Green and then it doesn't work out because so much suffering in this world comes to nothing um, so yeah, for me, religion is a way to look, you know, to, to look, uh, both historically and as, as, uh, as you pointed out, um, through the lens of story, um, at the big questions of, of being a person, you know, for, for most, for much of human history, um, you know, for 2000 years, uh, people have been looking at, uh, at these questions through the lens of, uh, the life of Jesus and the Gospels, and for much longer than that, they've been looking at those questions through the lens of the Hebrew Bible and the stories of the Hebrew Bible. Um, and I think that, like, those are uh, just because uh, uh, a lot has changed since the Industrial Revolution, both in terms of scientific knowledge and in terms of the role that religion plays in people's everyday lives. Um, that doesn't mean that we should dismiss that thinking around for instance, questions of suffering or what our responsibilities are to, uh, to each other or to other people. Um, and that, that for me is where I find, uh, religion to kind of continue to be interesting in my life. Um, you know, what, uh, what is the point of human life? What is the, what is the sort of mission or calling or responsibilities of human life? Uh, I think, you know, regardless of, uh, the particular, religious tradition in which you find yourself spending most of your time or most of your uh, spiritual energy or faith or whatever. Um, I think those questions are, are very, are very interesting to, um, and have been interesting for a long time to, to theologians. So, you know, if, uh, if I were, oh my God, John Green, that was such an opportunity. If I were, uh, a Buddhist or a Muslim, I would probably spend slightly more time than I do now reading, um, you know, Buddhist texts or reading the Quran or the Hadiths, but not that much more. Um, because the truth is like, I, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty engaged in other religious traditions. I find them, find them very interesting and very important to me. Oh my God. Oh, speaking of God, Autobiowak and Fenwa just reminded me of the point of human life, which is to create and behold beauty. Autobio Akin Fenwa, he's big, he's round, he's worth 10 million pounds. Akin Fen. Ran out of air, sorry. Just comes getting over strep throat. Don't have the lung volume I, I usually do. But oh my God, 
Oh, Akin Fenwa. Oh, it's just magnificent. He pulled it back. It's a big man, but he's so nimble. He's so nimble, and it just rolls in off the corner. Akin Fenwa. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, I'm full of hope. Um, yeah, and I guess for me, the like the idea at the core of most religious traditions, whether it's uh, um, Mahayana Buddhism or, or Islam or Hinduism or Christianity, is some version or idea of radical hope, the idea that hope is available to, um, to all people at all times. And that's the, that's, the core, um, that's the core belief that I guess is most interesting or valuable to me. But I also think, um, I don't know. I think it depends on the person. Why don't you pass to your friend? And then, yeah, just give him some time. Give him some time to get back because you're still so good, Akin Fenwa. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my God. Everything is beautiful. Nothing hurts. Autobio Akin Fenwa with two goals. And in addition, I mean, he just look at it. Look how he took his time. It was three on one. We had both John Greens, but Akin Fenwa, he's just dancing with the ball. He's just doing Akin Fenwa things. Just Akin Fenwa things, hashtag. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, the keeper could do nothing about it. Port Vale laid bare and humiliated by AFC Wimbledon, a club that rose from the ashes in 2002 and is now up to the third tier of English football. But we have our eyes on greater things, my friends. We have our eyes on bigger things. Um, you know, the, other, the only other thing I'd say is that, at least like in my own opinion, the quality of discourse around religion on the internet is just terrible. And it, it, it's usually sort of like nakedly, um, you know, uh, God clearly exists or God clearly doesn't, which I just don't think, like I said earlier, is like, those are, those are not the most, to me, the most interesting questions that are asked um, by religious traditions. Um, by the way, D Gallagher has had himself a quietly nice game despite being a 53 skill level. He requested to be in the game. I let him because I'm a good friend. Um, and, uh, I just uh, I wish that I wish that instead we could have question we could have conversations about um, uh, rather than conversations about who's doing uh, the calling uh, about the nature of the call if that makes sense I wish we could have conversations around why uh, why these things matter and what we're gonna do rather than just um, conversations I'll pass to you oh. Oh, what the frick? Just who was that that failed to score? That was Lyle Taylor? It's very, very uncharacteristic. That's not the Lyle Taylor I know and love. The Montserrat and Messi puts that in the back of the net 10 times out of 10. Um, yeah, I just wish we could have, I wish we could have conversations about, um, about uh, what the point of life is and how we're going to try to go about living it rather than like these very to me um overly simplistic conversations about um you're going to hell no there is no hell um which i just i just think are unfortunate now i understand that for some people like that's an important part of their faith the idea of hell and for some people it's an important part of their secular humanism to um to sort of free people from the bondage of religion um and uh i get it I just wish that uh, I wish we could have more interesting conversations. Boy, once again, Lyle Taylor just barely failed to get on the end of that cross. So it ends 3-0, but it could have easily been 5-0. AFC Wimbledon. AFC Wimbledon running riot. Look at how happy Wildshot is. He's such an odd-looking fellow. He looks like a, a Neanderthal, like he just walked out of the cave. Um, God bless him. Uh, so yeah, I hope I did a nice job uh, or a reasonably good job of talking about a very complicated subject while also trying to play FIFA. Uh, but I think the point is that I played FIFA well. Reeves, your beard is a disgrace to all of us. I don't just mean like AFC Wimbledon fans. I mean like humans. All right, two goals from Akin Fenwa, one goal from a wild shot, and everything is beautiful and nothing hurts. Suck it, Port Vale. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.